listen i remember i will never forget second of december 2002 i was sleeping in the night and a man walked into my room sleeping and all of a sudden i felt it not in a vision i was not in any vision i was a, i was i was conscious of myself and he tapped me i felt the tap of a man and i was alone i was shocked i was afraid all of a sudden i turned i didn't see any man but it left an experience it was as if it was like a force at once i knew things i did not learn i started crying until morning i felt i felt filthy i felt unclean practically unclean it wasn't because i was fornicating or doing any bad thing a presence a realm was introduced to my life that rattled my theology rattled everything that i had known for days i was crying i could not even eat let me tell you the truth i was sobbing and crying i was not in control of the tears i didn't understand the presence of god do you know because of that the passion that was in my spirit i got a notebook i still have the notebook i wrote a letter to all my friends my extended family in the village that was all i knew it was a letter on rapture that jesus was coming and everyone needed to pay attention that was all that i knew there was such a passion for souls not ministry not power not healing not deliverance not prosperity not money not influence souls the heartbeat of the father god hides himself in light he will give you a glimpse and hide himself so that you will look for him hallelujah i i always waited for the night time where everybody would go and sleep and then i would wake up and these encounters i kept writing letters i carried a bulk of my clothes i told my mother to give me a bulk of her clothes and a number of people i called my brother who was then studying in shika came home and we prayed on the clothes i drove down to an orphanage home i went to visit those orphans and do a lot of things i wasn't in ministry the bible says the spirit moved jesus drove him i didn't even know what the name of that experience was all i knew was that it was an encounter no one could deny hallelujah people would come around me and just sit quietly and within minutes they are sober and they are telling me the problems of their lives i wasn't a preacher i would study the word chapter after chapter i couldn't understand anything at that time i was having very serious eye problem i couldn't even look at light for a long time and i said if my eyes will come out let it come out passion i would cry and tell the lord reveal yourself to me who is this stranger that walked into my room didn't show me his face didn't know anything about the holy spirit hallelujah years before that time we had had encounter the baptism of the holy spirit and as very very small boys we did wonderful things we were not even conscious that the things that were happening were miracles it was dramatic js2 js2 i was made the timekeeper of the whole school because there was something exceptional about my life js2 every day pastor quarter to five somebody wakes me quarter to five without failing somebody will wake me i rang the bell five o'clock on the dot i want you to know that this the quality of christians that men of god are marketing and advertising will not stand the test of time they lack the impetus
chose to endure hallelujah and after that encounter i began to pursue god i i had no business with ministry in fact let me tell you something pastor the first crusade that we had there was no name of ministry we had to come together and then jimmy told me what would be the name of this ministry now i said i don't know god didn't give me any name let's find something i can't even remember the name we use trinity something one kind of name like that just to be able to explain to pfn we are coming for a crusade and now i see a lot of people all around moving with bodyguards and moving with people claiming that they are doing ministry and they mentored the life of very wrong men of god who are out of the program of god don't use cars and suits and english and crowd to gauge that a man is close to the presence of god you will be greatly deceived motivational speakers park stadiums are they anointed but they park stadiums with people paying thousands of dollars to hear them speak it doesn't take too much to gather people hallelujah is someone hearing me tonight and i began this encounter let me tell you something i would pray for days i wasn't looking for ministry show me your face show me your glory oh god that's all i want a time came it was it was a matter of life and death i remember i would go to life way life way and then i had i had do you know i will be in the restaurant in community market immediately i finish eating there's one anywhere i hear them playing a tape there were christian bookstores around i'll just go and sit down there i knew almost all of them i was hungry i spent my money on books books on purpose i'll never forget writing an article about myself if i were dead that's what i wrote that was the article i wrote how people may come for my funeral come for this and that and that i did crazy things hallelujah at the back of Ixaramat, you know that bush there they started developing it now it was at the back of Ixaramat. that's where i would go and shout like a madman in the night saying lord will you reveal yourself or kill me don't criticize a man till you know the passion and the story behind the glory God never gave me any assurance that I'll be standing and listening to people but he gave me one assurance he said early will I seek you I will show you some scriptures tonight hallelujah I'll never forget dramatic encounters I was staying in Danfodio and I remember what used to happen people will come to my room when they come to it was myself steve strings and andy ambassador who were roommates room 155 old block people used to come in the morning in the morning i was a strange person i could be lying down and the next thing the moment i see an angel steve strings or somebody the moment he may just be playing the guitar and something happens the power of god is breaking out people outside the room are falling under the anointing it was a strange life i would climb on top of vet medicine there was one empty place at the very top in the night when people are sleeping i would sit there i had a chair and i would sit there and cry in the night and say will you not reveal yourself to me oh god Holy Spirit, I wait on you. Holy Spirit, I wait on you. Hallelujah. When I was staying in area BZ, I used to seek the Lord. I was staying alone. Well, with a roommate, but mostly alone and this is where the encounters of my life took another dimension i was broke sometimes i would not have money but there was a guava tree in front of the house 
I will go and pluck the guava there and eat it and take water and say Lord I give you praise and I would lock up myself praying and then at a point listen to me certain things started happening in my life I would be praying I didn't even know it was called the cloud of his presence I stand before God and I tell you the truth I lie not a literal mist you know how vapor is that's how it will enter the room and I was being careful so that I wouldn't dabble into any demonic thing I had to search the scripture and I saw when the cloud of God's glory entered the temple and the priest could not even minister again it's in your Bible hallelujah I'll never forget praying for somebody who had chicken pox God is my witness it was in less than three hours or so the person came back and almost 90 percent of what he had had disappeared and there was nobody to clap for me i didn't even know it was a spectacular miracle you know the problem with a lot of people there are too many people to clap for you when you have not done anything so it makes us believe we gather around a lot of people who are not passionate about god i was seeking the face of god with all my heart then there used to be lots of fellowships on campus to do a lot of things i would just go behind sunday school building and sit down there and i used the worship that was being played by several campus fellowships for my spiritual look let me tell you something this is the reason why you may talk about somebody and god will judge you at once because he has a track record of sacrifice there is there is is like blood on the altar that speaks hallelujah when reinhard bonke was coming for crusade i remember that time i went i've shared with you the story six hours i was standing no seat a pregnant woman was standing close to me small time the woman will lean on me i said madam i understand you are pregnant but this 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 whole thing i'm we're all tired here but i was determined my life is a testimony of dramatic encounters i started having all of these encounters and i'll never forget listen one night the longing of my soul was satisfied when jesus christ appeared to me i have seen him it's not because i read it in scripture this is why i can tell you with authority that many people who claim they have seen jesus did not see jesus there is nothing that left there was no deposit in their life if you see jesus even if it's for one minute something will enter your life that you will run with for a lifetime this is the jesus i saw when saul on his way to damascus met this jesus what happened to him a hardened criminal at once he broke down he called him lord saul was fasting for three days and three nights he was blind the presence of god made a man blind physically and there are people who claim they see jesus every day fornicating around seeing jesus stealing around seeing jesus doing all kinds of things they say they are seeing jesus that's not the jesus i saw that's not the jesus i saw for when you see him when zechariah saw just an angel an angel he made zechariah dumb an angel hallelujah when i saw jesus i was flat on the ground goodness i'm telling you i looked like a speck of dust in this majestic i could not believe that this was the man preachers were trying to represent when you meet jesus it will change your life it will overhaul your priority about ministry it will no longer be an issue of denomination or an issue of sect an issue of i was this i was that when you meet jesus it will rattle your your whole theology to its foundation i felt as if i was a dead man 
I could not even see his face. Let me tell you the truth. It was the brightness. The, I, I, I don't know how to begin to explain it to you. And he stood there. His robe was white. It was not like physical clothes that you can see like this. It was like clothes, but it was like the clothes was attached to the person's body. So it's not like something you remove and put back. It's not our concept of clothes. No. Hallelujah. And light, brothers and sisters, light was emanating from him, the Christ. And all he did to me was to stretch his hands towards me. And he stretched that giant hand. Imagine like stretching an, an aircraft over a fly. That was how it was. And light, light that I cannot explain, that light came upon me. I don't know how God did it that he did not kill me. When I got up from that vision, there was a fire in my bones that I would live and die for. I've been captured by a love I can't explain. Now you have me and I'm forever changed. I've abandoned everything I've ever known. And I surrender. This life is not my own. I belong to you. I belong to you. I belong to you. I belong to you. Nobody coerced me. I surrendered my heart. This one is different from coming to do this funny born again thing that people do in church people just march and come out lord jesus lord jesus and he's pinching his neighbor i surrender all i surrender all immediately he finishes the the boyfriend or whoever is waiting for the person and then they ask him are you born again and the brother or the sister they mean to say have you ever come out they say yes now i've even been baptized come on now let me tell you there are many people who think they are saved and god does not know them i know some of you will be angry for this statement i'm making christianity with no transformation impossible except it's not the, the christ that died for our sins hallelujah this was the vision that opened me up into ministry i had been seeing a lot of encounters listen somebody was pursuing me and i went and i stood somewhere in a room all of a sudden i was moved to look through the window when i looked through that window i saw an endless sea of people it was it was as far as my eyes could see and they were talking they were lamenting it was a crowd of people hallelujah after seasons of trainings and building and their sound started zooming to my ears and then eventually it looked like they zoomed those who were in front and i had them it was a it was a sound of languishing and pain it was not a sound of celebration the people were crying and languishing in pain and this was what they said they looked at me and they said there's no food and no water all of a sudden in the vision it became like i had the keys to the storehouse of that entire crowd of people i was holding the keys and i told them i asked them i said who is the cause why you do not have food and water and they said you are the one and i said oh my god i was moved with compassion i started crying and i told them i'm coming right away to help you but there were people who had chased me and i was afraid of them but i took the step to open the door when i opened the door there was a gigantic man waiting for me and he was in the similitude of the holy spirit he now held my hands and he said let's walk together i will walk with you in this journey are you getting the point 
then he began to walk with me we were to jump from building to building just like structures like you have the student's hostel at the top from one end to the other and he jumped to the other side and he sat down there was a small ladder that connected the buildings and i was trying to walk slowly and he was looking at me and laughing and that was how i woke up all of a sudden my life changed i would be in a meeting and would hold hands together just to share the grace quietly seated here and people in rows who fall under the anointing and i could not understand i would stay in the secret place praying and building people would come to look for me the way they will know i'm around is that a great distance before they arrive people will not be able to cross that circumference what is your experience like you who has already called yourself pastor what is your experience what message do you have to give your generation that's why we do a lot of copying and pasting a lot of copy and and all kinds of things we preach messages without power without transformation because they do not come from a depth of truth you're beautiful you're beautiful every time you see me worship him every time you see me do the things that i do let me tell you something whenever there is any seed of pride in me it doesn't take a long time for god to copy it. there are too many encounters in my life all it takes is for god to refresh any of them any of them breaks me down many of you do not have encounters that's why a man of god will keep moving he's falling but he cannot see there's no encounter to remind him of where he was coming from and you can begin to sleep around with members of the church enjoy prosperity when jeeps start coming and cars start coming whether you pray or not you preach well let me tell you the truth the army that god is raising is an army that understand the one they are representing they know him they've had an encounter with him that's the only condition to be able to die for him it's impossible to die for a man you do not know it's impossible to die for a man you cannot you cannot relate with angels bow before him is beautiful There have been so many encounters in my life one time i was in a vision and there was it was outside all the doors were closed all the shops were closed it was like a community and i saw people sitting down sick people all around and i was looking at them and i said where are the doctors where is the hospital these people are dying what is all this i was shouting speaking to the air the people were so weak and helpless they could not even talk to me and then i had a voice that spoke to me from heaven he said go and heal them go and deliver them hallelujah one time when i was praying i was worshiping for a season i began to sense an unusual activity of the presence of god in my life i would worship and pray and build myself listen i want to give you a very big key to my life and that night it was a very deep encounter with god hallelujah and while i was in that place of encounter listen the lord spoke to me and he said from today i give you my presence as a gift this is what god told me hallelujah from that day god opened my eyes and i saw a huge angel i had never seen him and i said lord what is the name of this angel and the lord told me his name is called the angel of the lord's presence he said this is the angel that will walk with you the angel of the lord's presence hallelujah this is the reason behind some of these mighty manifestations that you see that a lot of people do not understand i have suffered for this anointing i've been criticized for this anointing people have called me all kinds of names my mother is alive she came here you have seen her my father is alive i grew up in the midst of people i didn't come out from a wilderness 
my life has been an open book from birth to death the Bible says oh Lord my God early will I seek you my soul cast for you it says to see your power and your glory this is the passion that is the missing ingredient every time I go for meetings after the meetings you see lots of people coming to kneel down oh man of God lay hands because we have emphasized impartations above encounters so people believe you can take a man's spiritual journey with one laying on of hands do you know that all the people that the apostles laid hands on and the patriarchs of old they had they they went through the wilderness together they saw certain things together the laying on of hands did not rob them of true spiritual experience hallelujah i remember my first encounter with a demon real physical demon listen let me share with you i'm sharing with you i'll put a few scriptures and we'll pray because tonight tonight god is going to give some people real encounters hallelujah it was in chapel one night i finished praying listen true story god is my witness none of these things i'm telling you are stage managed and the generator then they just made that generator there and i was just going to turn to the edge of it listen i saw a real physical demon i saw it with my eyes and he just shouted and told me get back that's what he told me before he finished saying get back i was already praying in tongues it was not premeditated and it just went vanished like that from that time authority came upon my life to cast out every kind of demon and devil anywhere brothers and sisters the ancient knew the value of encounters this is what we do not know especially preachers in our generation everybody just believes i have an occupation okay you studied mass communication or french and you don't know what else to do with your life you just say i sense the, the call of god upon my life now after nyse what will i do say, oh, yeah, try ministry now i say talk you were a very good bible study teacher you say truly i was they even gave me price you just go and dapple into the vineyard believing that you are going to be effective you think so go and ask the devil how herbalists are trained go and ask the devil how false prophets are trained go and ask the devil how witches and wizards are trained you think it's an ambition it's a fraternity it's a sacrifice with their life they sell their soul to satan those ones have collected the mark of the beast already hallelujah that's why you can stand and tell the sick be healed and nothing happens there is no experience demons are not idiots they have followed the track record listen something happened there was somebody when we started koinonia he was coming he was in the occult i'm sure one i can't remember his name now one young guy he was in the occult they used to come and sit when people started sitting outside quietly they had seen me this gentleman was sent it's just that we don't we don't share one tenth of the testimonies that happened it will amaze you do you know what this guy told me i went on a retreat i remember one time i went on a retreat the lord asked me to go on a retreat 72 hours my eyes did not see light whether it was day or night i didn't even know what time it was at all whether it was three o'clock i kept everything 72 hours dry i'm not talking about this kind of fast that you take granite in the afternoon later in the evening you are you can't even wait quarter to six you're already peeling the orange the the type your heart panting after god not looking for power hallelujah do you know after i prayed and i finished that experience 
the day they brought the gentleman to me and i was about to pray this is not an issue of being oppressed that you are casting out the devil this is somebody that is in occult aware he knows you know what he told me he said sir we have been watching you and he said while you were praying he mentioned the place he said for 72 hours in the realm of the spirit their eyes were open and they were watching hallelujah and he was telling me how that they strike a lot of men of god it's like a spiritual meter that's why a man can be backsliding and nothing is happening is the deceit of the devil to make you feel things are moving all right your prayer life has died nothing wrong is happening you are not even studying nothing else is it's like a meter it will keep going down 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 you will not observe it it will just keep going down one day the devil will hit you once this is the reason why you will see a great man people don't just fall like that brothers and sisters are you getting what i'm saying samson slept with a harlot true or false without prayer he went and removed the gate of the city that god is showing you mercy over your life does not mean he's endorsing your state he's challenging you to rise higher this is the message you will not find in church everybody tells people things are all right jesus has died wonderful you are now born again do everything just book in the name of jesus give him all the praise shout do everything you want to do and there's all kinds of madness and hell is raging war believers are not sensitive hallelujah one of the greatest assets i have in my life is not revelation it's not understanding is my love for god and it's like a cancer and i trust god to infect you with it tonight a love for god that nothing can take not power not anointing not influence people call me all kinds of names i don't care what you call me apostle daddy mommy uncle call whatever you want to call me that's that's your i thank god for the honor but there is something that i've seen that nothing in time can take it away hallelujah let me show you two scriptures i saw this scripture in 2005 and it changed my life forever john 14 21 mighty god john 14 21 let's read one to read please can we have it from amplified do you have amplified let's have it from amplified the person who has my commands and keeps them is the one who really loves me and what's his reward for loving me it says and whoever really loves me will be loved by my father are you seeing it now i want to show you the protocol of our encounter and i too will love him and will show reveal manifest myself to him i will let myself be clearly seen by him and make myself real to him is that in your bible there is a protocol god does not just reveal himself to people because they are crying or because they are praying many people want to encounter god everybody cry even in churches we hold all kinds of three days one week revival you see the poster revival exclamation mark revival two exclamation mark and then another revival three exclamation mark revival 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 and you see the people who are coming for the revival strolling around and coming to sit and the man of god who is now supposed to bring the revival who needs revival himself will now come with his his, his prepared manual and talk all kinds of stories and people just nod they say mm, if my people who are called by my name shall humble themselves and they now say it's time to pray and everybody just finds a little corner and is just sleeping and snoring at the end of the program they say they've held this year's revival you know what a revival is a revival is an awakening 
that keeps a city and a community stand still we don't read a lot of history we don't read a lot of where we are coming from the Welsh revival was so powerful that men will carry the newspaper as soon as they start reading the newspaper revival will start in their house what is our concept of revival the average young person in this generation cannot define what a revival is we have not seen it what is our concept of christianity what do we really want to achieve ask the average believer why do you go to church it tells you to go and worship what is that it's just because we grew up knowing that you are a christian and it's good for you to go to church second corinthians of first Corinthians Sitaka Prastim Bradijela Krosi Bahariya Dabaladaba. Lord, we bless you. The Lord is redefining someone's Christianity tonight, removing the things that are unnecessary. Verse 9, First Corinthians 2, verse 9. but as it is written i have not seen nor ear heard neither has it entered into the heart of man the things which god has prepared for who them that love him not them that pray to him not them that want to serve him them that love god let me tell you this is the missing ingredient in the body of christ it's not rema we have enough revelation there are powerful men and women of god i attest to it in nigeria in africa in the world there are people who have explored the portals of revelation back to back what we lack is love and when i say love i don't just mean love by giving i mean passion and priority god has very little priority in our generation let me tell you the truth very little priority very little there are few parents the average parent in nigeria they believe in god but god is not a priority hallelujah ask the average young man what his pursuit is either to go to school or to go and serve or to get a wife or to get some kinds of things imagine imagine this is the whole circumference of our christian pursuit ask a man of god what are you seeking he tells you by the grace of god we should go to ten thousand and fifteen thousand and then have our own auditorium have our own buses start making our own calendar then go on air is this our circumference of the pursuit of god I love him with my life he's my priority i'm obsessed about him and that has nothing to do with ministry it's my default state when i sing he knows i'm not pretending it i love him more than miracles let him take all the anointing from my life let him take the mean if god asks me pastor and tells me close koinonia close up here and i pack up everything i promise you to god who has created me this would be the last service that's the end of it everybody will feel bad everybody will complain and say why some serious people even say let's let's resurrect it you can go ahead and face god alone but i'll be so happy and i'll tell him lord what next if god tells me go and join a church or a ministry and be an usher i will do that gladly from the depths of my heart I, not minding anybody's recognition i don't want no recognition from anybody when you see god commit spiritual power to a man ask questions ask questions god is not stupid that's why a lot of people come oh god give me power i want to speak somebody sent me a text he said i cannot imagine how you speak and people fall i want it to i said go and ask god the guy felt disappointed go and ask god i'm not a herbalist 
I don't manufacture miracles in little dots of, of, of oil and, and communion and all of that. No. We want to jump the process of genuine encounter and intimacy. Yet we want power. That's why I question a lot of what we call power in the body of Christ. A man who has so much power without encounter is questionable. But right now everybody is chasing power power prophetic power apostolic power miraculous power people keep hopping around i've given warning nobody should come and stand in front of my house waiting for any impartation i'm not a herbalist you can come for counseling you can come for koinania god will bless you listen i believe in the laying on of hands we lay hands and we do impartation for all the people but we must lead you into a of desperation an encounter with the spirit say amen two more scriptures let me tell you how you know that god is not a priority if you attempt to live without him it's a sign that you do not need him in your life whatever you can live without is not a priority to you are you getting my point whatever you can live without is not a priority air is a priority you cannot live without it food is a priority you cannot live without it if you can live without god don't tell me he's a priority to you there are many of us outside inside you are looking at me right now you know between you and god that God is not a priority in your life you may even be in ministry you may be doing very well but is God a I'm not asking you whether you are born again or not I know you are born again I'm talking of a priority that if you are to delete many things in your life God will still remain hallelujah there is a law in the spirit Jeremiah 29 11 to 13 we'll read it quickly because i want us to pray the lord wants to plant a fire in our hearts tonight and reorder our spiritual pursuit aright that beyond revelation we will love him for i know the thoughts that i think towards you we know this scripture so well thoughts of peace and not of evil to give you an expected end next verse then shall ye call upon me and ye shall go and pray unto me and i will hearken unto you here's the condition verse 13 this is a law in the spirit never forget it for as long as you live read it everybody want to read and find me when ye search for me with all your heart this is the law for finding god in the spirit you will never never have an encounter with god until your all seeks him if you just seek him with part of you if you seek him with an ulterior motive you will, if you seek him because of business or marriage or money like many of us are seeking god god will give you the car god will give you the marriage god will give you all of these things we seek different things that god has we seek his hands we seek all kinds of things here is the law write it if anybody ever ask you what is the protocol for an encounter this is it you will seek me look at me let me tell you what it means to seek god to seek god is not to pray this is what a lot of people have been taught as seeking god prayer is not necessarily seeking god to seek god is not even worship because that's what many of us still believe to seek God is not to fast. To seek God is to cultivate a desire that seeks to make Him the priority of your life at any cost. That has nothing to do with prayer. It is when that happens, prayer can be a machinery to help you get there. Fasting can be a machinery to help you get there. Worship 
can be a machinery to get to help you get there but in themselves they cannot give you i know someone and he's i think he's one of the greatest person i've met in my life people talk about kings of fasting and people who fast i know somebody who fasted he rounded up last year 400 days 400 days very quiet brother nobody even knows him around 400 days i had the privilege of rounding up his fast with him and i prayed for him and laid my hands when he finished the 400 days six to six for 400 days in my life even in history i'm not saying you should do it i'm just telling you that there are people like that yet you will still see that there are certain dimensions that he has not entered so it's not just about fasting people brag with fasting they they intimidate others with fasting they make it look how many days have you fasted one will say three dry your wet say dry another person said all kinds of things if fasting alone brought people into the place of power some people would have brought the throne of god to the earth and be sitting on it by now let me tell you fasting will not in its own just make god reveal himself to you the psalmist said as the deer pants after the water pools bishop oedeko said something he said if you want to know the secret of the hand of god in my life you must know my heartbeat for god i know a lot of preachers who do not have the heartbeat for god i go for meetings and i talk with preachers after a powerful service they look at me and they admire deeply the things that god has done in my life and when they come and sit down 90 percent of them don't ask questions they are just looking for an envelope and they put offering and sign checks where is my pa bring check and you you sign it you you really think it will give you an encounter i believe in giving and all of that we've taught this there and they just drop it and they say pray for me when you meet a man of the spirit ask questions don't just kneel down and say lay hands on me what was the secret of this glory i know lots of preachers that teach well but three days after they are teaching people have forgotten everything they have said but i know certain people reinhard bonke is one of them you meet him once your life will never be the same i remember when he came for a crusade i think in makodi dr paul and Enche said something he said after the crusade they should book the room and leave it 24 hours the room that paul and Enche slept in hallelujah and when paul uh, when when